Welcome back everybody, hope you're doing well. In today's video I'm going to do what I love doing the most and that is to set up a little nano aquascape. Small tank, simple hardscape and then stick it with loads of plants. Yeah, it's going to be a good one, let's get started. So here on top is the tank that we're going to be using today. This is a standard size 36P. So it's measuring 36 centimeters from left to right. Uh, it's 26 centimeters tall, and I think it's 22 centimeters front to back. So a very small tank, holds roughly 20 liters or maybe like five US gallons. Now this morning I took down a previous layer that was in this tank. And after cleaning it, I noticed that there's quite a big scratch on the front glass panel. No idea how that happened, but obviously that's gonna bother me later on. So I'm thinking to actually turn the tank around, see if the back glass panel doesn't have any scratches. Okay, I don't think there's any scratches, so that's good. It's a little bit dirty though, so let me just quickly clean it. And after I'm done cleaning it, I'll apply a new background. Okay, background is done. Now, in case you're wondering what I'm using for the background, it's basically this self-adhesive glass foil. Uh, you can find this in your local hardware store and this is normally used for like glass doors or windows just kind of have a little bit more privacy you know this one is called basic and it's sort of like a, a frosted type of look and if you want to pick some of this up i'll leave an amazon link in the video description actually i'll leave links to pretty much everything that i'm using for the setup in the video description okay let's move on next thing we need for this tank is a light Here we go, this looks really good. So this is a Chihiro C2. Quite a popular light, it's been around for a few years already, but uh, yeah, I really like it. I think it's a perfect light for this size aquarium. This thing is app controlled. You can increase the intensity, decrease the intensity and make like daytime schedule. So really good light. It's not sponsored or anything. I just uh, think it's a good product. Okay, we're all ready to get started. Now this morning I took down the previous layer that was in this tank and I saved most of the substrate. This stuff is still full of beneficial bacteria. So I'm gonna use it in here as a base layer. Uh, hopefully that way we can kind of cycle the tank faster uh, we should have less algae issues as well and we can add in fish faster as well i've done it a few times now and it works really well okay that's the first substrate layer in you might have noticed that there's still a bunch of plant roots and stuff in there it's no big deal those will eventually decompose and actually be turned into nutrients now before we move on with the rest of the substrate, I want to start with the hardscape. Uh, last week I was visiting one of my favorite shops and they had a beautiful hardscape selection and I brought home this amazing piece of black spider wood. It's actually called Scaper Root. It's a product from Sierra I think. I'll leave a link in the video description. Really nice piece of wood. I want to use this as the main piece and then I also brought home a few of these small pebbles. So I think this will be a really nice natural combination. So yeah, that's going to be the hardscape materials. Yeah, I quite like how that looks. I've added a second piece of wood, smaller one, sort of the same type, so it's matching. And then I think we can go for triangular style. I feel like I've been doing a lot of triangular style compositions lately, but I just absolutely love them. So we can have tall plants in the back, um, lower in front. I'm thinking here in front have like a little sand, beachy area as well. This I'll probably still fill in with soil, but yeah, over here we can have like a little sand area. Now before we move on to the next step, I just want to quickly secure the hardscape. So I'm going to glue the pieces of wood to the pebbles. And I'm thinking to also glue the, some of the pebbles together just to make sure that everything's like solid and nothing is going to start shifting when we're doing maintenance because it's quite a small tank and if you need to move around with your hands like it's easy, it's easy to bump into something and knock things over so I'm just going to glue everything together of course as always with liquid type super glue and cotton pads. Okay. 
Okay, Hardscape is nice and secure. We can do a little test. Yeah, we're all good. Some of the pebbles are kind of glued together as well, so it's one solid structure. And over here in front, I said earlier that I want to have a little sand area. So I just kind of fill those two gaps here with a small piece of filter wool, just to make sure that the, the soil substrate cannot start mixing with the sand later. So now we can finish our substrate layer. So I'm gonna cap the old substrate with a fresh new layer of aquasol. For that, I'm gonna use the Dental Plant Soil. This is a brand new product. They only released it a few months ago. Should be full of nutrients, so it should give our plants a nice boost in the beginning. Okay, that's the aqua soil done. Really happy with that. I think it looks good. Now to add a little bit more detail, I'm gonna add some small gravel around the, uh, the pebbles. Here we go, hardscape all done, looking good. I'm gonna add a little bit of sand in this front right corner here, but I'll probably do that after planting. Uh, during planting, you always spill some soil granules all over the place. Probably gonna go in here as well. It's just easier to clean up when there is no sand in there yet. So I think we can now move on to planting. Okay, got a pretty cool plant selection. I have four different types of stem plants, some green, some orange, some pink. And then I have the beautiful Crypt Flamingo, also pink color. I have some Busa Flandera, some Crypt Parva, and then two different types of moss. So it should look pretty good. Okay, I think we're almost done with the planting. Really happy with it so far. I think it looks amazing already. There's one more plant that I want to add, and that is this one right here. This is called Hydrocles nymphoides. Yeah, this is a bit of an experiment. It might just get way too big for this small tank, but um, lately I'm just a little bit obsessed with lilies and nymphaeas, and yeah, I just want to put one in every aquarium. So I'm going to try it out here as well. If it doesn't work out, we can just take it out. So now we are really done with the planting. So there's one more step before we can fill it up and that is to add in the sand. So over here I have a little bit of ADA Colorado sand. So this has like a reddish tone to it. I'm gonna sprinkle it over here and then fill up with water. It has now been just over a month since I set up this tank and it's doing really good. After about two weeks I did the first trimming session, but besides that I haven't really had to do much at all. As expected I had very minimal startup algae thanks to the base layer with old aquasol. I have slowly been adding some inhabitants, starting with two older sinkless, a few days later a couple Nevi snails, 
and last week I added a small group of red cherry shrimp. Now I wasn't really sure yet what fish I want to keep in here, so I decided to go and visit one of my favorite fish shops, Ocean and Lake. They had a really nice collection of betas, with mostly half moons, but I really like this one which is called a Koi Galaxy, and he is coming home with us. After coming home I decided to add him to this 30cm cube, just for a short time until his new home would be completely ready. In here I have a few sparkling gouramis, so I was curious to see how they would all get along, but they've been absolutely fine. Okay, so maybe they're not getting along as well as I thought. I just saw that for the first time, so I immediately caught him and moved him to his new home. I think the sparkling gouramis were attacking him because they're getting ready to breed. I added the beta in this tank about two weeks ago, and since then I've let it get completely overgrown, so it's one huge plant mass. Of course, the sparkling, sparkling gramas absolutely love that. I think that's why they were a little bit mean to our beta. But this video is not about sparkling gramas, it's about our new beta. And I think he needs a name, it's kind of a tradition. So guys, let me know in the comments how we should name our beta, and then I'll pick my favorite, my favorite name from the comment section. Now betas can jump and I don't have a lid for this tank, so after I'm done making this video I'm going to lower the water level just slightly, just to be safe, but for now I'll keep it like this just because it looks good on camera. I'm sure some of you are also wondering about the shrimp, like betas and shrimp, is that a safe combination? And I think it depends a little bit on the beta, but from what I've experienced so far, like in the beginning they will try, like they will try to catch the shrimp, but shrimp are just way too fast for beta, so at some point they will just give up trying, you know? Really happy with the end result. Hope you guys like it as well. Hope you enjoyed the video. As always, don't forget to smash the like button. See you guys next time.